Hey guys, Mr. Dobrens here. This video is gonna cover how to set the X and Y zero when we want to cut a workpiece. Now, one thing to be really clear on is wherever this cutter is when we start the machine, it's gonna read zeros in the three axes digital readout, which where you see the numbers here, that's called the digital readout because it is telling you where the machine understands this cutter to be. But every time we turn the machine off and on, this resets to zero. Like if I hit move to zero right now, that's where the machine started up. So that's where it believes zero is. But that may or may not be, and is most likely not, where you want to start doing your machining or where you've installed your piece of stock on the spoil board to actually cut. So what we need to do is to essentially put a point where zero is going to start. Now, the way, depending on how you've written your program or how you have set the parameters of your program in your CAM software, you're gonna need to determine where zero is. Now, for some people, it's gonna be the very corner of their workpiece. It could be where they start machining. Whatever it is, you need to be really clear on where that is because you have to tell the machine where that is. Now, the way we do that is pretty simple. What I'll, I like to do is I like to put a little point where zero is, if I can, because that helps me line it up visually, and this is a visual process. So what I'm gonna do is essentially just jog the machine over to that point. Now, I'm, a, I'm near the edge, so I'm not gonna use the fast function. I'm gonna go to the medium jog, and I'm going to get myself as close to that piece as possible. Now, I do find it easy to get the Z-axis close, but not touching my workpiece. Now that I'm close, I'm gonna to go to slow. And what I'm gonna do is in my X axis, I'm gonna line up the center line of my cutter as um, centered on that dot as I possibly can. Okay, that's pretty close there. And now I'm gonna do that same, for, uh, that same process of lining up the center line of my cutter with that point. But to do this, I really need to be down on the left side or the right side and visually look and line it up. So I'm gonna kind of go over here and line that guy up. And that's pretty close. Now with the CNC router without a, um, a specific offset, like with higher end uh, metal CNCs, this is as close a process as we can get. Um, those other types of machines generally have a an offset programmed into the machine so the computer knows exactly where zero is. But for the CNC routers, they don't. We have to set it every time we want to cut something. Okay, so now that my X and Y I've lined up as good as I can visually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero each of those. Now, be careful with the zero X, Y, Z button because it will also zero, oops, it will zero my Z. And generally speaking, I'm going to do that with either the touch plate or manually in a different function. So what I usually end up doing is I go into the DROs for each axis and I set zero. So I push in zero and I click set. You always get a warning message because if you do this by accident, you can cause a crash later. So the warning message is a good thing. But I know I'm right, so I'm putting in zero for X and Y and my Z I've previously set using um, the manual or touch plate method, so I know my Z is correct. At this point, I'm pretty much ready to machine. One thing to keep in mind is you are gonna have to raise Z up to make sure that you can get the dust shoe back on. That is absolutely one of the things we need to do to make sure we're capturing dust. Um, but at that point, my X, Y, and Z have been zeroed, um, you could say, Z has been zeroed, or you could say my tool offset has been set. And at this point, I'm pretty much ready to go.